Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Maria and as you can notice from my surroundings, if you are watching my channel regularly, I am not in Michigan, I am in Serbia. So a few days ago we arrived after a long journey, uh, about 23 hours and we were so exhausted. So last few days we were adjusting as well as spending a lot of time with our family. Today, I wanted to show you how my collection of succulents is doing here in Serbia. This was really long time since I was here to take care of them. It's been a whole year and I was really worried how many losses I will have. My mom uh, that's in her 70s, she comes and takes care of them while I'm gone. But it's been really hard for her to deal with pests because she's not really knowledgeable or doesn't have products to take care of them. I did teach her how to recognize mealybugs and uh, I got her alcohol, so she's been managing that, but there were some plants that were wilting, so I told her, pull the plant out of the pot and check the roots, and she said that there were some mealybugs in the, in the roots, um, and she threw away uh, some of those plants completely. She lost, I don't know if you remember, but Orbera variegata that I had. She also lost uh, Crassula elegans that was really small and struggling. And she told me that my big pot of Crassula jade's necklace that I have for a few years uh, is looking like it's dying. So I was pretty much the most sad about that. Uh, everything else I feel like, well, it's gonna get replaced uh, or maybe I'm not gonna have it anymore. But when I came here, to the apartment, I was actually surprised how great my collection is doing. And you're gonna see now, as I give you a tour and an update on my succulent collection in Serbia, that my mom has done an exceptional job. I mean, they all that are that stayed alive are uh, looking great, they look healthy, they have grown. The only, the only problem that she had is that she took outside a lot of plants about a month ago and she burned pretty heavily uh, my chrysoulas, my big chrysoulas. But that's more of an aesthetic issue than health issue for the plant. So uh, as I'm showing you, I might do a few projects because my plan is for the plants uh, that show any signs of struggling to check their roots just in case um, if um, you know they have root mealy bugs or anything else. I actually brought from the United States my organic neem oil so I can treat the plants, soak the roots, water them with the neem oil, make sure or spray them. And um, yeah, I'm excited to show you how they're doing. Let's take a look. So guys, if you remember this Crisula, uh, it was very uh, long and gangly. Uh, I ended up cutting it uh, all the way, you know, all of the branches, and my mom actually propagated the branches I need to show you. But look how nice now it looks. Uh, it has bonsai look again. It's really cute. I think this one is called Hobbit, Hobbit or Golem, something like that. Anyway, I'm very happy. This was actually here in the corner supporting this and when I pulled it to show you, this just collapsed. Look at how huge this is. I actually donated this guy and I don't know if you remember in my last video, I just left about this size for uh, branches like this in the pot and this is all the growth in, the, in, in one year so this one I'm gonna have to take care of I'm gonna have to cut it too big okay this little cactus is doing good um, I don't think we I don't see any pests I think it's very healthy I will check the root system I will actually pull it just in case um, here is a type of Crisula that I have in Michigan. It's a Strigum Buttons hybrid. I think it has done really well. It did stretch a little bit here because this is hanging away from the light. So I'm gonna probably do some propagation here. Look at this, guys. Do you remember my Crisula Monglo from last year? How it got stretched and I all chopped it all up 
So I left these leaf, pairs of leaves for propagation and this all new growth. I think my mom did a great job because it did keep a compact look. I think they look amazing, right? I don't see any pests. I think it's doing really, really well. So um, I'm also surprised about this grandiflora. I don't see any mealybugs. This is the Paleo grandiflora. I will just in case check the roots and clean the pots and probably treat it with uh, neem oil, like water it with neem oil, just in case. All right, well here is my Crisula Tom stump. We're gonna work on it a little bit. I wanna remove these branches that seem dehydrated. Something happened to them. It might also need to be trimmed a bit. Look how wide it is. Maybe just a little trim. This one here survived. I actually had a root rot on this one a year ago. And if you remember, I did a surgery and it survived. Um, it does look a little odd the way it is. So I don't know either. I'm gonna put it in a smaller pot or I'm gonna differently pot it up so it doesn't have a hole in the middle. So we're gonna work on that as well. This one kept blooming during the year. This is my astrophytum and actually had a bloom uh, finishing blooming just when we came i just removed it silky yellow blooms so i wanted to propagate it actually chop it here about this yellow and uh, reroot it um, i'm considering doing that because i don't like that and i don't want to bury it deeper either so we might chop this one it's going to take a while to root it though uh, and then this one here, guys, do you remember it from last year? It's doing wonderful. Look at all the crown of blooms. And they're just opening right now. It grew about an inch, I would say. It's doing really well. And I don't see any pests, actually. I've been trying to check if there is anything white. And I don't see anything. So overall, I think plants are doing amazing. There is a lot of them outside that I'm going to show you. And there is few tropical plants that I will give you update on as well. Okay, guys. So there is few of these branches that I don't know what happened to them. This one here started drying up. So I'm just going to cut it. And uh, this one here. Hmm. This one does have a little bit of mealybugs here, I think. Yeah, just a little bit. I don't know why. It, did it have a like root rot or dried up? Because it started rooting on top here. So maybe it's just dehydrated. Well, I'm going to cut the most dehydrated part. But the rest of it looks pretty good. I'm going to maybe just cut it up when it started rooting. So we're going to be putting that one back or just separating because there is too many of them. Well, let's cut this long branch here. This one. And maybe this here just so it's not as wide I'm not planning to repot it okay so this nice healthy long branch I'm just gonna tuck in here with a hope it's gonna root there is another long one Okay. Tom stump is a very, has really tiny leaves, probably one of the smallest uh, chrysulas when it comes to those button looking chrysulas. I'm just checking if I have any holes here that I can fill. Any bare branches. Okay, they 
hair. Yeah, so I suppose that's that's good. Not gonna change anything on this one. I have to hold this one or otherwise it's gonna flip because it's so heavy on this side. My mom is not gonna be happy that I'm gonna chop this one. She really likes this euphorbia. She did burn it a little bit here. So I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is just cut. Now there will be a sap to deal with here. Right there. I think I probably need to cut this one as well. I think it's not gonna flip right now, so I'm just gonna quickly go discard these. I am sad. I cannot keep these, but you know, I could probably cut the tops like this here and propagate those. But um, yeah, I really don't need all of this. I feel so sad to chop it all up, but it's just so big. Now again, cut the top here that I can propagate. Cut the top. I'm thinking to leave some of it. It's just gonna get really quickly big. And you can see there is a lot of new growth coming up. So what I'm gonna do guys is just tuck these in here. I probably need, um, it's, it's a dry soil, but I probably need to separate them in something else um, to root. Yeah, I'm gonna leave this one and that one, but yeah. And I chop this one, shorten it. Um, yeah, I have a little bit more sap to clean from the scissors. But overall, I think that one looks much better. So here is my bear paw, guys. Um, it has grown so much over the years. As you can see, it has that uh, a bit uh, stretched bonsai look. The only thing I'm gonna do with this plant is just remove some of the dead leaves um, and maybe branches, um, clean it up a little bit. I don't see that it had much problem except a little bit of stretching. So I don't think I'm gonna change the pot either. And I probably won't be pulling this plant out. I'm just gonna water it with some neem oil mixture, but yeah, I think it's healthy. Just gonna check for some dead leaves. There is a little bit of debris here in the pot, but not much really. This is all the debris from the pot. Not too bad at all. My mom has done a good job with this one. This is my Echeveria govoidis that uh, also has done wonderful here. Had a lot of pups last year. I'm not expecting much to be done here. I'm just gonna check for the debris. See, I'm lifting it a little bit um, and pulling out any kind of dead leaves. Not much, really. That's why I love these Agavoides varieties, guys. They tolerate a lack of sunlight well during the winter time they don't need a lot of water and uh, just great the chavarius it actually doesn't have a lot of debris this baby one has some debris that i'm gonna clean up because i want to leave this baby in the pot so yeah 
and it doesn't seem like it has any mealybugs. The soil looks pretty good. No sign of mealybugs. So um, the only thing that I'm going to do is remove this bottom and scrub it because I don't I don't like the residue from water. This is actually rainwater and soil mix that was um, coloring this white pot. Otherwise, looking great. So here is another one that is doing great is it's this Havortia. The only thing that I don't like is a uh, dirty bottom and I have here sponge that I use for dirty work. <laughs> it's not the kitchen sponge. So I'm gonna just show you how I'm gonna scrub this brown. Just like that. And I'm not going to report to this one because I think it's fine. This Echeveria has done wonderfully. Look at guys how big it is. Um, it does have some mealy bugs. I noticed some white here. No, no, not much damage, but here inside, you see infestation, guys? There it is. So this one, fortunately, um, didn't have much infestation before I came. So I'm going to spray it all in between these places right now. Clean some debris. There is not much. I do feel some, some dry leaves underneath, not very much. And uh, yeah, that one's gonna go back outside. These guys are looking amazing. I was so surprised uh, to see how well they're looking. I think the colors, you can't even see, they're even prettier outside. There is something from a tree uh, that got stuck. So these guys have been outside early on. I told mom they're gonna be fine. So I don't notice any pests here. I don't think this is Fred Ives. I think that's that other one that's very similar. Douglas, I think, hut or something like that. It looks beautiful, has some pink or purple color. And then my ghosty. Oh, look at it, guys. It's amazing. Has just a little few dry leaves that I'm going to remove. Um, but overall, it has that really nice mature look. Maybe it's a little bit too big for this pot. Maybe I'm going to have to trim it a little bit. We'll see. I'm just uh, cleaning some debris. So you can see some of these are almost down. Maybe this one will have to be chopped. I don't know. Here is few that have issues. Um, I'm going to bring this one closer. You see this a fuzzy white bowls those are mealybugs and there is some stretching due to lack of light so you can see this is how stem was and then it got really narrow um so yeah doesn't look very good this one i have for a very long time it used to be purple my mom moved it again there is a lot of mealybug infestation i'm just gonna quickly before i spray it pull it out of the soil I just want to check. Ooh, it's overwatered. Yeah, which has caused the root rot. Oh, yeah. I think my mom was overwatering this one. I might just put it. There is no mealy bugs, though. I don't see any. So I might place it in a, a bit drier soil mix. And I'm going to just go ahead and spray with alcohol all of these branches and then another one that has some issues is this one here uh, again I'm gonna check the soil no mealybugs in the roots um, just on top there is few spots I don't like these two guys how they look oh, especially this narrow part I think I'm gonna chop it off here. Um, I suppose I just spray them all with alcohol so that does look better. Um, but I might remove some of these branches 
and root them separately. I'm just gonna press this soil a little bit. All right, and then this one here that got narrow, I'm gonna cut it where it started getting narrow. Just shorten it overall like that. I think it looks better. I'm just gonna <clears throat> spray it with alcohol. Now look at this poor guy. It's just so dehydrated everywhere. Doesn't look very good. I just wanted to show you uh, how much better cuttings of my sister-in-law look like from the same plant. My mom thinks that this one is root bound, that that's the problem. I don't know what the problem is, but I don't think it looks good. I do see a lot of new growth coming up. Um, so maybe I'm gonna pull it out of the soil. It's not root bound and it's it's a wet soil. What I think it could have happened is that it actually, uh, maybe it lost roots. Um, so it just, it's not able to get enough water in. I don't know. Like if you look some of these pieces that are dried up, they probably had root rot. So there's some healthy parts here. <clears throat> I'm gonna probably reset this whole plant. It practically doesn't have roots. Yeah, this is all rotten. That's what the problem is. Oh, okay, well, let me get scissors. I'm gonna chop these up and um, reset them. So here is a good tip for you. When you see plants drying up like that and looking really stressed, check the root system because maybe it's not the problem that it's root bound and that the pot is too small. Maybe it's the problem that it lost the root system and it's no longer getting the water. Uh, in cases like this, it's the best to take cuttings um, so that they can develop a new root system. I don't even know where to cut hair because I feel sad to chop off, but that has to be done. Um, and you don't wanna have too big of a cutting because it's gonna be very hard for it to root. So I think I'm gonna try to chop off some of the branches so that it's not too huge of a cutting. So you can see, guys, I'm separating some really nice cuttings that have plumpy leaves. I cleared up about half an inch of stem or maybe less than half an inch of stem um, that's going to go in soil. These are This is one that was rooted and this is the one that my sister-in-law gave me. So I decided only rooted ones I'm going to leave in this pot and all the cuttings will go in the separate pot. There is a lot of branches that I, I just think that they don't look good and they're pretty dried up, so maybe I'm gonna just toss them. Uh, there is a lot of plant, uh, so I'm trying to go through it and see if there is anything that has a good root system or I just have to take cuttings. This one is rotten here and you can see it's all dried up and the soil is wet, but it's not taking in anything. So this whole thing might have to be thrown away. But I will have a plenty to establish this new pot with this plant. Um, there is some plumpy leaves here. I will remove them on the bottom so I can root this. This is gonna be, I think, a nice cutting. I'm hoping it's gonna root. Here is some that haven't dehydrated completely on top think they will be able to root but then some are just I don't think that there's enough strength in them they're so soft and dehydrated um, I don't know if they're gonna root or not 
Look at this beautiful astrophytum, guys, blooming. Has the silky light yellow blooms. I have this for about two years. When I got it, um, it was end of the sale and I think it didn't sell because it has a little bit more yellow on the bottom. I'm also concerned as it grows that this narrow bottom will not support it as well. So I wanted to chop it for a while. I know this is scary, but I'm hoping it's gonna root. So I'm gonna cut just above this yellow here uh, and um, try to reroute it while I'm here. Well, maybe it's not gonna happen while I'm here. So I'm gonna give instruction to my mom and uh, place it in a completely dry soil. All right. This is how it looks, guys. Really healthy. But I think I'm gonna have to flatten this because I didn't cut it properly. Let's light it a little bit more. All right, and uh, yeah, so this is gonna go to dry and then in a dry soil and hopefully it's gonna root. So here's the quick look of all of the plants after I have done projects. I have showed you all of these in the beginning. Two pots of Jade's necklace. These are, these are all propagations and some of these are rooted ones. Here's this one after I have chopped it a bit. This one was all sprayed and cleaned for millibugs. This was the only one that had a little bit of root millibugs and it was soaked with neem oil mixture and I will soak it one more time before I leave. This one I trimmed and here is my propagation. <laughs> getting dry a bit and this is a dry soil ready for it. So let's go outside and check out jades, sun severius and agaves. So here are my jades that are outside, sorry for the noise. This is the soil that I've been using. So you can see this one has been burned quite a bit. This is the burn, but still beautiful. This is the baby from this jade that I will most likely keep because it's smaller and easier manageable for my mom. It does have a little bit of mealy bugs. I sprayed it and I think I'm gonna have to spray it one more time. There is a little bit of white. Um, Sun Severius. And here are my gavis. Do you remember this one? Uh, last year it had only three leaves. It was a baby that I separated from the big one that I had. Look at how much it grew. <laughs> Looks amazing. And this one I just repotted and it was root bound and it had a pup coming up. So this agave macrocenta, I think as soon as it gets pup, I will probably keep a pup and give this one away. So yeah, so that's it. Inside, I have two more tropical plants. Here is my beautiful Benjamin. It's been doing wonderful here. And here is a new addition that my mom purchased just because she loves Schifflera. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have two succulent marketplaces to visit. So keep watching my videos. See you soon.